the reason that Bitcoin is so sound, literally sound, is because it's thermodynamically sound. And uh, it's, it's this masterpiece of engineering because we've created a monetary asset where we've stripped away all the counterparty risk. So the real promise of Bitcoin is it's a network that is backed by pure digital power measured in exahash, 350 exahash. And that digital power is something that can't be spoofed, can't be hacked, can't, can't be tricked. There's no, there's no way uh, to take a shortcut through it. Over the years, the Bitcoin Miami conference has established itself as the world's biggest Bitcoin conference and the largest convergence of investors, educators, developers, and other stakeholders in the digital asset industry. This year's conference was no different, with hundreds of speakers, including two U.S. presidential candidates, lawmakers, several renowned best-selling authors, and some of the biggest names in the Bitcoin space. People like macro analyst Lynn Alden, Strike CEO Jack Mallers, Validus Power Executive Greg Foss, and MicroStrategy Executive Chairman Michael Saylor wowed the audience with their extensive knowledge of the investment industry and Bitcoin's superior offerings for all categories of investors. During a fireside chat with Bill Miller, the fourth, the prospective chairman and chief investment officer of Miller Value Partner, Saylor discussed some of Bitcoin's qualities and core fundamentals and why the cryptocurrency is a leading global asset without equals. According to the MicroStrategy executive chairman, there are 10 important qualities everyone must focus on to develop themselves. And in discovering those 10 qualities, you discover that Bitcoin is an embodiment of those virtues. Michael Saylor's tips for developing yourself are 1. Focus your energy. 2. Guard your time. 3. Train your mind. 4. Train your body. 5. Think for yourself. 6. Curate your friends. 7. Curate your environment. 8. Keep your promises. 9. Be cheerful and constructive. 10. Upgrade the world. Staler tweeted about these 10 qualities in 2021, but he went into more detail in a recent two-hour interview with the What Bitcoin Did channel. During his insightful and philosophical discussion with Miller's sailor in his usual manner, discusses the many parallels between adopting these qualities to strengthen your mind, body, and personality and investing in Bitcoin. According to Saylor, Bitcoin is sound not just because of its amazing fundamentals, but also because it's been judiciously stripped of all the usual counterparty risks associated with equities, bonds, real estate, and other asset classes. Before we listen to Saylor's highly inspiring and insightful description of Bitcoin and the Bitcoin network, Please take a little time to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to drop your comments and observations in the comments section below. Everything you do helps with the YouTube algorithm and immensely contributes to the channel's growth. Thanks and enjoy the video. I think those rules are interesting because those are thermodynamically sound rules for, for life. Uh, when you say curate your environment, focus your energy, uh, it's all about not dissipating energy keep your promise is exactly what Bitcoin does. Stay cheerful and constructive is, is the Bitcoin message, which is Bitcoin fixes things. Bitcoin can help everybody. And so the idea that I want to create um, a, a digital equity without equity risk, and I want to create a digital commodity without commodity risk, and I want to create uh, a computer network without computer risk. And um, I want to I want to create something which is so simple in its essence that there aren't many moving parts left to break and yet it's so powerful and profound in its promise that everybody in the world and everything in the world can plug into it and benefit from it is what makes bitcoin special. Um and the whole idea behind those rules for life and the idea of Bitcoin is they're, they're essentially the same. They're in a world where everyone is dissipating their energy. The most rational strategy is to conserve your energy. Conserve it. And Bitcoin is the ultimate conservative thing. We are, we're moving in a world where where uh, we can't trust the data and we can't trust the networks. And brain power is about to become a commodity where AIs can generate billions and billions of fake people. And so the real promise of Bitcoin is it's a network that is backed by pure digital power measured in exahash, 350 exahash. 
And that digital power is something that can't be spoofed, can't be hacked, can't, can't be tricked. There's no, there's no way uh, to take a shortcut through it. The, the, if you have 100 gigawatts of power and 100 million mining rigs, you might just slow it down, but it would take you 10 years to slow it down. So what Satoshi created is the world's most secure database accessible via the world's most secure network. And we're living in a world where everybody wants security. You want to call it financial security, national security, cyber security, social security. If you want security, you need to find the most secure network or the most secure resource on Earth. And it's not gold anymore, and it's not land anymore. And it's, it's not anything that can be created by any human being anymore. It has to be something that is, uh, that is transcending all of those human institutions and all human motivations. In, in essence, it needs to be a network that runs without human intervention. And that is what Satoshi created when Satoshi created Bitcoin. Today's episode is sponsored by iTrust Capital, the number one crypto IRA platform in America. We allow you to invest in your favorite cryptocurrencies without worrying about taxes. That's right. iTrust Capital allows you to buy and sell your favorite cryptocurrencies completely tax-free. That means if you invest $10,000 into Cardano and it grows to $100,000, all of your profits are tax-free. Why is it tax-free? We took the existing retirement account industry and flipped it on its head. Instead of boring stocks and bonds, you can invest in crypto. How is it secured? Through Coinbase Custody, one of the leading cold storage providers with a $320 million insurance policy to protect against theft, hacks, and loss of funds. Roll over your existing retirement account or even start a new one from scratch. Questions? Schedule a free call with one of our crypto retirement account specialists and they can help you discuss your options. Start your crypto IRA today and retire early only at iTrust Capital. Click the link in the description to open a free account now. The past year has been challenging for Bitcoin and the cryptocurrency industry. At the beginning of 2022, the leading crypto asset was trading above $40,000. Then came a barrage of crypto-related collapses and macro issues that have negatively impacted prices. There's also the consistent regulatory onslaught on the industry by federal and state regulators in the United States. Last month, during an appearance before Congress, the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission (SEC) Chairman Gary Gansler blamed the entire cryptocurrency industry for the regional banking crisis. During a discussion at the Bitcoin conference, Saylor explained that he chooses to see these events as positive rather than negative for Bitcoin. According to the renowned business executive, last year's collapses are a testament to the weaknesses in the crypto ecosystem, not in the Bitcoin network. Saylor also believes that the collapses and regulatory crackdown have been and will keep educating the public about Bitcoin's core fundamentals and the stark differences between the leading crypto asset and the rest of the crypto ecosystem. Here's another clip from the discussion. Yeah, I think the past 12 months have been very auspicious. Um, what we're seeing is... Uh, Regular clarity is coming to the entire crypto space. And the clarity is Bitcoin is a commodity, an asset without an issuer. It is ethical. It is, uh, it is stable. It is, um, it is virtuous. And the rest of the crypto ecosystem, the crypto exchanges, the cryptocurrencies in the form of stable coins, the crypto tokens, the other crypto applications, uh, they're all, all being viewed with increased skepticism. And there's an awareness that, that Bitcoin is not crypto. There's an education process where all the regulators, all the legislators, all the media figures, all the investors are realizing the benefits of the Bitcoin. Uh, Bitcoin is an asset, an asset without an issuer. And now they're beginning to realize why Bitcoin is a commodity. Uh, and the reason why it's a commodity is because it, it is backed by digital power. And so the appreciation for Bitcoin's en energy use and Bitcoin's computational power is growing. The confusion between Bitcoin and crypto is shrinking, disappearing. 
capital's flowing from the crypto ecosystem into the Bitcoin network. Uh, development effort and innovation is flowing from the crypto ecosystem to the Bitcoin network. Um, there's an explosion in development effort on Lightning. There's going to be an explosion in all sorts of other development efforts. Anyone that wants to implement a cybersecurity application is going to have to ask the question, how can there be any security in cyberspace if I don't peg it into the Bitcoin network, if it's not built on Bitcoin? Those interested in national security are going to look to Bitcoin to provide cybersecurity and cyberspace for national interest. Those interested in financial security are going to look for the most secure financial asset in the world, and Bitcoin is the most fin secure financial asset in the world. So in short, although there are people that can focus on negatives, the melt, uh, there's the meltdown of Terra, the meltdown of Luna, the meltdown of Celsius, the meltdown of BlockFi, the failure of Alameda, the failure of FTX, the failure of all the crypto tokens, right? The, the meltdown and failures of the DeFi exchanges, the meltdown of some crypto exchanges, right? And the skepticism that people are taking with regard to crypto tokens that are stable coins. All of those things, which could be viewed in a negative light, are actually positive for Bitcoin because they're all accelerating the conclusion of the mainstream investor that Bitcoin is special and ethically sound, technically sound, and economically sound. And it's accelerating the understanding of the technology community that Bitcoin is the world's most secure database and the world's most secure network, and maybe in that way the most promising crypto network in the world. And you, it was a very expensive marketing campaign to convince people in Congress, in the Senate, the regulators, and the media that, uh, that Bitcoin is the world's number one crypto network, but Bitcoin is also the world's most promising new asset class. But, uh, but if anything, today, if you look at all the utterances of the lawyers, all, the, all of the talk on Capitol Hill, if you look at all the regulatory publications, if you look at the mainstream media coverage, what's pretty clear is that the consensus today is Bitcoin is an asset, Bitcoin is special, Bitcoin is a commodity, Bitcoin is uh, without an issuer, Bitcoin is here to stay. Bitcoin is the future. Bitcoin is the future. It's the world's most promising new asset class, and everyone who has taken the time to learn about its qualities agrees with Saylor, even former traditional finance investors and analysts. Best-selling author and journalist Michael Lewis, the writer of The Big Short and Money Ball, was also at the Bitcoin conference, where he discussed his opinions on the current financial landscape and the opportunities presented by the cryptocurrency industry. Lewis said, When I first encountered the idea of being able to use blockchain technology to disintermediate financial intermediaries, I thought, thank God. There are lots of unnecessary hands touching money when financial transitions occur. They've just been kind of hard-baked into the system. Lou has also outlined the many pitfalls of traditional finance and how they caused the global financial crisis in 2008. He acknowledged that Bitcoin is specially designed to help the world avoid those pitfalls. If you go back to Satoshi's original paper, he stated, Line 1, paragraph 2, you eliminate the need for a trusted financial intermediary. Clearly, the very beginning of the spirit of the enterprise is mistrust of existing financial institutions, well-earned mistrust, on the back end of the financial crisis. What are your thoughts on the assessment of Bitcoin's role in today's world by the two Michaels? Please drop your comments and observations in the comments section below. Also, watch out for more insightful discussions from some of the greatest minds from the space who attended the Bitcoin conference. We are going to bring you all of the actions from the three-day conference. So ensure you subscribe to the channel and turn on post notifications so you don't miss any of the videos. Thanks for watching.